What's going on everybody? My name is Mike at Filmboy24 and today I have a desk full of goodies. A lot of tools, some film, because we are going to reload an 8mm magazine. Clearly if you've watched any of my videos, at least in the last couple weeks, you realize what a fan I am of Regular 8 film now. I was a Regular 8 film virgin up until about a, two or three weeks ago when I first experimented with it after about 35 years of shooting film and I'm hooked. So what I thought I would do today is sort of a continuation of my Regular 8 video that I released a week or two ago and let's load one of these 8mm magazines. This is the exact magazine that I used for my previous video where I shot some 8mm film and we developed it and split it and scanned it and whatnot. If you haven't seen that, take a peek at it. I think you'll enjoy it, hopefully. So today, what we're going to do is we are going to load this magazine. I'm going to show you just how easy-ish it is to do that. Now, I have a few things that I have devised to make that job a little bit easier. Every Thing that you do once you open this magazine and get ready to load needs to be done in total darkness. I obviously can't do that for the demo. Well, I can, but you won't be able to see it. So we're going to do it in the daylight, and I'm going to use some dummy film or old exposed film. Ideally, you'll want to use some fresh film like this I got from Film Photography Project or some other fresh 8 millimeter or double eight film because it's actually 16 millimeters wide and it will typically come on little spools like these this is 25 feet of film this is how you buy film if you were to buy it at a place like film photography project you get them on 25 foot spools and these load into your double eight camera or eight millimeter camera you shoot all that 25 feet of film and it wounds onto your take up reel, you flip it and then you shoot the other half of that spool. If you buy it in bulk, like I did, you will get something similar to this. This is a 100 foot daylight spool. It is loaded with 100 feet of brand new double eight movie film. Now it's emulsion in. These magazines have to be emulsion out. So when I do this demo, you'll see I'll use one of these dummy rolls or this here. I'll probably use this. And you'll see that this has been spooled on one of these for about 60 years. So it has that natural curve and it fights me and it, you know, we don't get along too well and it's a little more difficult. When you use fresh film, it's not quite as difficult. It hasn't been spooled for nearly as long. So it's much, much easier. Now, there's a couple of things that I use personally to make this job just a little bit easier. I needed a way to spool onto the reel close to 50 feet. You really don't want to go over 50 feet because then it really gets crowded inside your magazine. So err on the side of just under 47, 48 feet to be safe. So what I did is I took a two by four piece of wood and I use this for this is my multi-purpose you see it's got all kinds of little screws and some tape marks on it but I took one screw a little longer and I kind of measured it out I believe it's a number eight screw but it's got a smaller head on it and a number I want to say a number six screw for this side so what I basically did when I removed the original film out of this cart when it was brand new I took the full reel, I set it down on the corner of this board until the edges of it were touching the edges of my board. I then made a mark and I put a screw right smack in the center of the hole of the little reel that, that's inside the magazine. I then took another screw, this one, screwed it into the board a little ways away. So now I can take fresh film, put it on this one, and then take your little spool out of your cart Put it onto this one. I then use my noggin. I actually tried this first with my little electric drill and I did it in the dark and I did this and I started it and the light came on on my electric drill and exposed some of my film. So instead of putting a piece of tape over the light like a smart person would do, I just used my little battery operated screwdriver. This 
forward reverse. I took a, a little hex bit, it's called, I believe. It's in the shape of a little hexagon on the end. And I wrapped it with some gaffer's tape and popped it into the electric screwdriver. And I'll show you in a minute when I move the camera closer exactly how it works. But this just basically goes right on top of that little spool. You pull the trigger and it spools it for you. Pulls it off of this one and onto this one. Then when it gets near, well, you'll see in a second. What I'm going to do, and you will need a standard hole punch. And it might help if you have a pair of scissors. Let's move the camera overhead and let me show you exactly what I do to load this magazine. Now it's empty right now, but it won't be in a minute. Okay, we have everything laid out here. First thing we do is remove the magazine. Now this magazine, as I said earlier, is empty, but that's okay because we are going to load it up. So the first thing you wanna do is pull the tape off of the edge. There is a piece of eighth inch gaffer's tape about nine inches long that holds the lid on. That is the only thing that holds the lid on. It's not like the 16 millimeter uh, magazine cartridge that has the two screws. That's it. The tape is the only thing that holds it on. Now you have a roller pin on the inside of the lid and you have a roller pin on the bottom of the magazine itself. This is simply one of the little take up spools. Now these take up spools are both identical. One side sits down and is the light proof side and it's also the drive side. In other words, it is what is engaged by the camera. There's a little raised uh, lip on it right here, a little pin. And the other side is, goes face up into the, I'm sorry, goes face down into the cartridge. So the side that's flat, that doesn't have the little pin sticking up, is what touches the flat sides of your cartridge. Flat, flat. Now there's two little grooves inside each of these rollers. There's a groove on each side and, in, and protruding from each pin in your magazine are these little spring-loaded, boing, boing, see the little spring-loaded these little spring-loaded catches that actually engage these slots. So when you slide this on, you can put it on any way you want, but you have to twist it for it to lock in place. Same with the one on the bottom. You can put it on and it'll, you'll feel some a little bit of tension. And when you twist it, it'll finally lock on and it catches. And that's what allows your camera to drive these rollers. Okay, with that, the inside of your magazine, as you can see here, has this little separator guide. This is simply to keep your feed side from your take-up side. So this comes right out. This is your gate here, and your pressure plate is inside there. When you push this, and you gotta be careful because that's pointed, when you push that in, you can see the entire gate area moves. It's on a little this spring steel or brass tensioner here. The inside, inside here, this little pin, when you pull on it, you remove, you're pulling the pressure plate out. Your film has to go in between that pressure plate and the gate in the front. Now let's talk for a second about how your camera sees your film. Because you see, this is blacked out. Even when you pull this gate or this pressure plate out, it does, you're not able to see it out here, nothing's happening. And your film is behind these black covers right here. Well, when you place this inside your camera, this has got four little sides to it. This little pin sticking out has four sides. It's like a little square. And when you lock your camera 
cover, when you lock it down, it actually spins that a little bit. And let me see if I can do it and show you what it does. It turns it just like so, thus exposing your film. So now when you pull this pressure plate, you can see it move back there because your film is now exposed. When you unlock the door on your camera, it closes those light, that light proof little shield there. And it's difficult to do without, there it is. You have to twist this, but your camera does that for you. You don't need to be concerned with that. Leave it closed while you're loading your film. Okay, let's get started. Your film, if you buy film like this from the FPP in a 100 foot spool, it will come on a daylight rule, either a metal or a plastic daylight spool, 100 feet, and it's spooled on emulsion in. You see your emulsion is your matte side. In this case, it's sort of that, uh, that off tan color. And your base side is your shiny side or this, this sort of black side right here. Now to load these magazines, you have to have your emulsion side out. So this has to be wound opposite of the way it is on your reel. And this is the way it also the way it comes when you buy these 25 foot spools too. Because in a real camera, one where it goes from one reel to another reel, the way it sits in your camera, it goes through your rollers like so. Eight millimeter film is perfed exactly the same on the top and the bottom. So your orientation really doesn't matter. The only thing we do need to be concerned with is the orientation on your feed reel for your magazine. So think of it this way. Your little reel here, or your little spool, sits in your magazine like this. And like the picture I showed you earlier, here it is again, you can see that it comes off of the reel from the right side, behind the gate, and then back onto the take-up spool on the left side. So we need to make sure that our film, when it's, when it's wound, is coming off from the right side with this pin on your spool facing up. So clearly, if we take our film, the film comes from the bottom of the spool, and we wrap it around this way. Now you can see, as it spins around this way, it's going to be oriented properly because it's coming off of the right side, you know, the right side of our spool. So that's the what we need to be focused on. So we take a little piece of gaffer's tape, black, white, red, blue, green, whatever you like. Again, make sure your pin is facing up. And we want to tape your film to the reel, just like that. All right, once you have that taped, you have to remember one thing. The camera is going to pull this film with the claw one frame at a time, just like this. Now, when you get to the end of the roll, remember there's both ends are the ends because you have to switch it and or reverse it or flip it over. So when you get to the end, your, your camera needs to stop pulling at some point so it doesn't just rip the film right off of the roller. Now the film comes from the factory with with some with the appropriate like holes and whatnot in here to get the camera to stop pulling, the claw to stop pulling. Well, we're doing it ourselves, so we have to create our own. So what I like to do is take about three inches of film, take a hole cutter or a hole little hole puncher here, and I do this in the dark. And the way I do it in the dark is I kind of with one finger feel, push this hole punch across and kind of feel when it gets near the end, snap it one time and let go. Now I know that there's a hole that cuts out at least one or two perforations off the side of the film. Then you have to turn the film over and you have to do the other side. Well, you don't have to do the other side, but I'm not smart enough to know which side the camera is going to pick up and that's too much math for me so i just do both sides 
on each end of the film. So I'll do the same thing over here and you kind of feel and punch the other side. You will get a hang of it. You'll get your own little knack of when, because you don't want to punch it if you just feel the end and you think you're at the end of the film and you punch it, that's not going to help you. So you have to do it. You have to cut out some perforation so that once it, the camera gets to this part here, it stops pulling the film. It has nothing to grab onto. Okay, now that's what you should look like without that hole there, my practice one or my show off hole. Now we're ready to wind it onto our little reel here. Now, using this old practice film, this film has been wound for hundreds of years. Okay, maybe more like 50 years on one of these little spools. So its natural curve is going to kill me here when it comes to winding this up. And if I let go, it's going to brrrr. So keep that in mind. When you buy new film, it's a lot less curved already. It's a lot less. It's going to fight you a lot less because it's a newer film and it hasn't been wound nearly as long. So you want to get it started. Now the film is going to stick up above the top of your spool just a little bit. You want that. You don't want it to stick up down here on the bottom. You want that as flat as you can get it. You get it started. You take your handy dandy DIY machine tool, make sure it's oriented the, the proper direction. And you start spinning it. And you want to keep it flat or as flat as you can. You need to stop every now and then, kind of flatten it down. Remember, this is in the dark. I keep hitting the other button as I'm doing it. And you can kind of, as you keep it flat, you can kind of feel on your edges because once this film reaches the edge of your board, remember, that's about 50 feet. So I'm going to roll this up. You're not going to watch it. I'm going to cut. All right, we're just about to the end, I can tell, because we're hitting the end of our board here. This is already a 25 foot length or close to it. And there we have it. As you can see, that natural curve really wants to fight us. But that's okay, we're not gonna let it defeat us. So now we're on the other end of the film. And remember what we did on the inner side we have to do that again on this side. What I like to do is cut off the last, I don't know, six inches or so of film because that's the factory stuff. I just snip it off anywhere in there, discard. Now, once again, we have to punch those holes about three inches in. So, what sometimes I think it's probably easier is to go ahead and put the film into the magazine first. This way, if it unwinds a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything. And you wanna keep everything sort of handy, like your little uh, separator piece here, but you wanna drop your film into the magazine, put your little separator in there, just like so. What you have to do, it's really not as hard as it may look, but this film has to go behind that pressure plate. So I don't like having long fingernails, but you gotta kinda keep one on your, you can move that out of the way, on your pointer finger and you reach in and you pull that back and you just insert the film behind it, just like that. Now, you're gonna hear it snap into place. Hear that? That's the pressure plate pushing back down flat against the film strip back there. Now we're good to go. This really isn't gonna go anywhere. If you wanted to wind it up a little bit just to kind of keep things all snug, you could. It's probably gonna unwind again anyway. But this now is ready for your punch. And you can pull this film freely. And you wanna go about three inches in again. Now you wanna make sure you're doing this outside of the magazine because if you lose those little punched holes inside the magazine that could get you know ugly like me so go about three inches i usually do about a finger length maybe a little more and we'll punch them again one now it's easy to do in the light i showed you how to do it kind of to measure 
when you're not in the light. But there's your punches. You're going to take your reel. Now on this one, you need to make sure the pin, the little pin part that protrudes there on top, is face down. Because remember, it's opposite. It's face up on this side, face down on the other side, because you're going to turn the cartridge or the magazine. And you want to, so it needs to be flat on this top side. Then we take a piece of tape. And you can actually just tape your film first. It's easier in the dark, I promise you. Put a piece of tape on your film. Make sure you are on the flat side. And tape it on, just like that. And wind it. Wind, wind, wind. And then you just need to sort of set it inside that little groove there. It is going to want to unwind on you as well. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing, especially when you're using film like this that has such a curve to it. You have to get this to seat. And there is a, there's a slot, sort of a groove, around the inside of this, this um, reel here, and there's a protrusion on the inside of your cart or your magazine, and you gotta make sure that stays in. You could put this in last if you'd like. So you wanna wind this. And by the way, these don't have to be right opposite each other. In fact, it's probably a wiser idea if they were not directly opposite each other, but that would make sense, and I don't always make sense. There, now we are locked in, but it is gonna move on us if we're not careful. So we wanna put this in, and you wanna make sure this little thing stays in between the two reels. Take your lid. This lid is a carbon copy of the bottom of that magazine. This flips over and you want to work it onto, it's on top of that spool now. Flip it over and we're locked in. Look at that. Locked in place. Then you want to take your approximately nine inches of quarter inch black gaffer's tape. This can be done in the light you're pretty much completely sealed off right now. Those little flanges inside there prevent the light from coming in. And I usually use these as a guide, like this top little mark here. I'll start right beyond that mark. And the lip is not very big on these little cartridges here, these little magazines. So you've got to go pretty close to the top of the magazine. And you get it as straight as you can. And then you just go around and you seal this thing closed. Go all the way around, and that's it. All taped up. Once you're taped up and you're at this point, this magazine is ready for use. And that's all there is to it. Let me tell you something. If I can figure it out and I can do it over and over again and get it right, there is no doubt in my mind you can too. This is ready. You can put it in your Revere 8 or whatever camera you have that takes magazine type 8 millimeter film. Have fun with it. If you like kooky videos like this, crazy, sometimes informative, but mostly, you know, just a lot of fun, do me a favor and tap that like button. Turn it blue like that. I appreciate it. Subscribe, leave me a comment, hit that little bell notification, and then you are going to be aware every single time I put some fun, informative, or at least fun, video out for your view and entertainment. Until the very next time that I see you, and I'll be ready with some more 8mm film, I'll see you all in the next go around.